What's up guys, my name is Brandon and today Apple released iOS 14.5 Beta 3 and iPadOS 14.5 Beta 3 to registered developers and soon to public beta testers. Now this comes about two weeks after the release of Beta 2 and this Beta 3 rollout was weird. I mean, first off it came out a few hours after it usually does and it was only available in the dev portal, no over the air update like you see right here on your phone and then Apple pulled it shortly after so that you couldn't download it and then we thought it was gonna get released tomorrow and then shortly after that they released beta 3 over the air and we were able to see it in our software update section here on our phone so really weird rollout but here we are we have it now and we're gonna cover it in this video we're gonna talk about what's new we're gonna talk about the bugs bug fixes performance battery life and more and just to add to the weirdness of this release we also did not get any watch os or tv os updates along with this ios and ipad os update like we normally do but we did get the mac os big sur 11.3 beta 3 earlier today at the normal time, which is 1 p.m. Eastern, which I did make a video on my YouTube channel earlier today. So if you missed that video, I will leave it linked down in the description below and also up in the cards. Make sure you guys check that out if you do have a Mac. So taking a look at the size of this update, you can see here it came in at 492 megabytes on my iPhone 12, and it will hover around 500 megabytes for all devices, including the iPad. But that of course does depend on the version you're coming from and the device you are on. So let's go ahead and check out the build number for this update, settings general about 14.5. You can see there the build is 18E5164H. So we went back to an H build here. So it seems like we may have went back a little bit in terms of the number system and the betas. So we went from an F to an H, which is pretty interesting. So if we go down a little bit to the modem firmware, you can see we did also get a new update to the modem. It's now 1.62.02. And I will discuss a little bit more details about that build number and the significance of that near the end of this video when I talk about when we can expect the next beta. But anyways, let's talk about what's new here in 14.5 beta 3 and ios 14.5 overall has had a lot of changes in the music application we got these swipe gestures we got different icons and glyphs all around and in beta 3 the changes continue so we have a few things and the first one i can't tell if this is a bug or if this is by design but if we go into the now playing screen right here pay attention to the volume grabber so when i go ahead and tap on this take a look at how the volume grabber has a little delay there so there's part of me that thinks this could be by design because it can make it so that you don't accidentally move the volume, but there's also another part of me that that looks like a bug. So I'm not sure if that's a feature or a bug, but you can see every time you pull up the now playing screen, there's a slight delay before the volume grabber appears. And one very annoying bug that I've had for quite a while, I believe ever since like iOS 14.2, appears to have been finally fixed here in 14.5 beta three. So I have 14.5 beta two on the left, beta three on the right. Take a look at what happens when I press shuffle right here on both and I go to the now playing screen and then I go to the section right here where I can cue. You can take a look at how I cannot cue or move around the first song on 14.5 beta two and in beta three I can. And that was actually a bug stemming back I, literally like a few months now. I've had the issue where I'm not able to move the top song. You can see there, there's nothing there to grab it with and I've faced this for a while. I've talked about this in multiple videos, but now in beta three, it appears every time that you can move the first song, you know, after pressing shuffle or play on a playlist or an album. So not sure how that lasted so long. It seems like a very easy fix, but Apple has fixed that here in beta three. And that's always one of the first things I check. And those are the only things I found in the music application. But of course, if I find anything else, I will let you guys know in my follow-up video coming this weekend. Now, speaking of music and not necessarily the music application, but music recognition via the control center. So you guys know how we have the Shazam toggle right here where we can press it and it will listen for music. And then it will, you know, give us back what that song name is and the artist who sings it. So in beta two, and I talked about this in my follow-up video, in beta two, I had some really annoying issues with this music recognition toggle. So sometimes I would press it and then it would just pretty much instantly cancel and tell me that it could not find the song, even though there was a song playing. And I had that numerous times. And so far in beta three, it appears that that has been fixed. So I've not had that issue one time since installing beta three and I've tested it over 10 times. So it looks like the music recognition bug 
has been fixed here in this beta. That was only a bug in beta two. I didn't have that bug in beta one. And of course I did talk about it in my beta two video and it appears that Apple has fixed that. We also have a few UI changes inside of the maps application. So when you go ahead and type in an address and begin your commute, you will notice in this menu here, there are a few things changed. So number one, the report icon where you can report, you know, police activity and accidents that is new in 14.5. The glyph has changed from beta two to beta three. So beta two is on the left beta three over here on the right. The glyph is now filled in for report right there. You'll also notice that this arrow on the right side is bigger. We don't have the line right there. And then also we had the grabber visible right there in beta two, but now in beta three, there's no grabber visible right above the time. So just an overall cleaner look inside of the maps application, which I am a fan of. Also inside of the find my application, the items tab now appears by default without you having to go into Safari and type in, you know, the code manually to bring this page up inside of the application. Now it appears that items is just showing up by default here in 14.5. So that would kind of go in line with the leaks and rumors pointing towards us getting air tags sometime very, very soon. And then we also have some new information regarding Apple card family support coming soon to the wallet application and the Apple card. So this was spotted in the code by nine to five Mac. And here's what they had to say is new in the code of 14.5 beta three about this new upcoming feature. Apple card users will be able to choose between two different types of sharing with allow spending only guest users will not have access to the total balance settings and transaction history. To enable these features for guest members, the card owner must select the option become co-owners. And they said, interestingly, if you invite a family member as a co-owner, the wallet app will offer the option for the invited member to have their own credit score in bureaus instead of sharing the same credit score. So that is very interesting. And we may see this Apple card family feature coming with 14.5, or it could come shortly after, but the code in 14.5, again, as spotted by nine to five Mac does suggest that they are preparing for it. Apple is preparing for it. It's pretty much already in the code here for this new version. So that's pretty much everything I've found so far in iOS and iPadOS 14.5 beta three. But as you can see, Apple did also post the release notes here in the developer documentation. And we do have one display issue that was resolved right here. It says iPad pro 11 inch and 12.9 inch are now able to connect to external displays using the USB C digital AV multiport adapter. So that must have been an issue before, and that has been resolved here in beta three. And then it looks like we have a new feature for Siri here in beta three as well. So it says for music, podcasts, and audiobooks requests, updated dialogues for app selection are now available. And then Apple goes on to talk about resolved issues in Swift and Xcode. So a pretty minor update as expected from a third beta, but I'm sure there are even more features and changes that I just have not discovered yet. But of course I will talk about those in my follow-up video if there are any this coming weekend. Now I do also want to address a few bugs that were not fixed in beta two, and I'm hoping they will be fixed in beta three, but I will let you know in my follow-up video. Number one is going to be loud notifications. So sometimes the notifications will just be abnormally loud. I've talked about this numerous times. I'm not going to keep repeating myself, but the loud notification bug, I'm hoping that's been fixed. It will be, you know, a couple of days before I can tell if that's been fixed or not. Also airplay issues. A lot of people are having issues with airplay here in 14.5. So in beta one and beta two, people had issues. I had the biggest issues in beta one and beta two did fix that, but some people are still having issues with airplay. So hopefully that has been fully solved. And I will be testing out airplay as well here in beta three to make sure that we didn't, you know, take a step backwards. Now also some people had issues that when they go to the right, when they swipe right on the home screen and go to their widgets page, the widgets would just all disappear. So a lot of people have had this issue. I've gotten a lot of comments about this and it happened on beta one and beta two. It has not happened to me at all, but uh, you know, some people are having that issue. So you guys need to let me know if that's happening to you because it's not happened to me one time. So hopefully that's been fixed for those having that issue. Now, as far as the performance goes, performance feels just fine here on beta three. I mean, I've not really been able to tell any difference at all in the performance going from beta two to beta three, at least not yet. Of course, I will have to use this for a few days before I can really tell you guys if the performance has improved at all. However, if we go into the Geekbench scores, you can see here I got a 1589 and a 4068. So I believe that is slightly lower than beta two. Let's go and check that out in the history. And yeah, so you can see beta two is right below. We got a 1595 on beta two versus a 1589 on beta three. 
than a 41.18 on beta 2 versus a 40.68 on beta 3. So slightly lower on the Geekbench scores, but of course that doesn't always tell the full story. And I will have a more, you know, real world usage kind of experience to share with you guys this coming weekend. So stay tuned for that. Now, as far as the battery life goes, of course, that's also way too early to tell with battery life. Obviously, I've not noticed anything you know, drastic. It hasn't like drained my battery 20% since I installed it or anything like that, but it's too early to determine whether or not battery life is better here in beta 3 compared to beta 2 or beta 1. So now when can we expect to see iOS 14.5 beta 4? And I would say that that's most likely coming next week. So I would think that this is the time when Apple switches from a two week cycle to a one week cycle. So I would expect the betas to start coming out on a weekly basis now. So I would expect to see 14.5 beta four on the week of the eighth, most likely on the ninth. So if that's the case, then we could also see a fifth beta on the week of the 15th. And that is kind of indicative of that build number. So once again, we do have the build number with an H in it. So I would expect to see at least one more beta, most likely two more betas. And if that's the case, that puts us at beta four, beta five, and then final on the week of the 22nd. However, there is also a possibility of an RC build on the 22nd, and then maybe we'll get the release on the 29th or the 30th. So sometime on that last week of March. So I'd say that we're gonna get the final within the last two weeks of March, but of course time will tell, and it will of course depend on if Apple really does switch over to a one week beta release cycle. But you guys already know to follow me over on Twitter and just kind of keep up with the Discord server and the beta channel to keep up to date with when these beta updates are coming. And of course, when the final release is coming as well. You guys know I will keep you updated over on Twitter. And then of course I will upload the videos here on YouTube as well. But yeah, guys, what do you think about iOS 14.5 beta three? How's it going for you? Have you noticed any more features or changes that I didn't cover in this video? Let me know your experience down there in those comments below. And of course, stay tuned within the next couple of days. I will have a community poll up on the channel where you guys can vote how this beta is and talk about your bugs and issues or features, anything you want. And of course, I will bring you guys the follow up video this coming weekend. But if you guys enjoyed this video, I would appreciate if you give it a thumbs up. And of course, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss my 14.5 beta 4 video, hopefully coming next week. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.